first of all, we've seen that many countries around the world did change their laws or their corporate governance codes in response to the original Cadbury model. It's a very impressive level of diffusion of this code. And in particular, we see this model of independent boards uh, being diffused from the developed world to the developing world. So many emerging markets have adopted the, the model for good corporate governance that, that Sir Adrian's committee recommended. So then secondly, we can see a very clear statistical relationship between the adoption of these improved standards for accountability and a measurable impact on stock markets. So we see that where there's, there's an increase in legal protection for shareholder rights, we also see an increase in the value of uh, the shares of listed companies and we also see an increase in the turnover of shares on public stock exchanges and this is almost certainly because the, these laws promote investor confidence in, um, in listed companies and they lead to more stock market activity. There's been some straightforward adoption of rules like uh, the requirement to have more independent directors on boards, um, things like the, the separation of the chief executive and chair role. So the, 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 ba the basic idea behind the code, of course, was to improve accountability to, to external um, shareholders and to make the, the operation of boards more transparent. So many countries have done that and in some cases they did it by passing new laws and in other cases they made amendments to their stock exchange rules. It doesn't really matter um, whether you do it one way or another because of different legal cultures and you'd expect countries to respond in different ways to the basic model of the code. But what is striking is that many, many countries now accept the principle that shareholders should actively monitor the boards of listed companies and that disclosure using Using the Cadbury Code model of comply or explain is the best way to regulate this process. America did it in a different way. America is said to be very pro-shareholder. Actually, that, that, that's not really true. Um, in, in America, there's obviously a very, very active stock market or, or series of stock markets. But under American company law, shareholders actually have fewer rights to control the board than is the case in, in, in Britain. Um, now, having said that, there were already some standards in place under stock exchange rules when the Cadbury Code was first developed, which referred to the, the importance of having independent directors, and those developed over time. And the Sarbanes-Oxley Act that was passed in the early 2000s also um, pushed US um, corporate governance closer to something like the standard originally embodied in the Cadbury Code. So America is a little bit sui generis, and because, of course, it, it already had a lot of, a lot of the features of shareholder-orientated corporate governance before the Cadbury Code was diffused worldwide. We don't see the same pattern of adoption of the Cadbury Code in their case. But that I say, it's partly because they already had many of these standards. There may be a slight bubble effect here because what we see is the laws which protect shareholder rights are correlated, to, correlated with an increase in stock market values, but not to the same degree with an increase in the volume of share trading. So what we see is a slight inflation, an overinflation of share values associated with not with more people trading or more shares being traded, but to, with what has been called irrational exuberance around about the time of the financial crisis. So I think we see to some degree, yeah, uh, over um, um, exuberant stock markets in America, in Britain, in the years immediately prior to the crisis. And there may be some correlation here with um, shareholder protections being perhaps excessive. So you can have too much of a good thing. Um, it's not a question of simply increasing shareholder protection. There's an optimal level of shareholder protection and there's a right level of stock market activity and th there's a right size for a stock market in a given economy. In emerging markets, they haven't got to that point yet, so there the code made a real tangible positive difference. In developed markets, it's arguable that we don't need any more shareholder protection right now. In this country, it's true that the, the, that the code is so-called soft law, and basically it works on the, on the comply or explain principle. But if you're a listed company and you neither comply nor explain, then you could be delisted, so it's a very powerful sanction. Uh, that, 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 that's an extreme case, but there's no doubt that companies take this very seriously. Now, look, what we do see is even though it's not legally binding, most listed companies tend to comply with the provisions of the code. They don't use the explain option, which would allow them not to comply, but to try to disclose, the, to explain why they're not complying and hope the market accepts that explanation. So I think we, we do see perhaps too much homogeneity now across companies. There may be many good reasons not to literally comply with the rules about independent boards, for example, uh, depending on what type of company we're talking about, but actually very few companies 
choose the explain option. Now, that, that's a potential problem because, because the premise behind the code was companies are diverse, they come in different shapes and sizes, it shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all solution, but probably over time that's, that's pretty much what we've got. Now, your question about behaviour, sure, I, I think in some ways the soft law code, which appeals to, to a strong set of values, may have an even greater impact on behaviour than a law backed up by sanctions which don't always work and which can in fact be a bit heavy. The stress since the crisis has very much been on getting shareholders to be more responsible and active. Um, and we, we, we see this in recommendations for major institutional shareholders to play a stewardship role. So in, if anything, that's consistent with the original premise of the Cadbury Code. And we're seeing that debate continue.